So uh, my mom, about 10 days ago, woke up and the in one of her eyes, her vision was three quarters gone. It was just like a black. Oh, like no. I want you to imagine opening your eyes and you have a sliver of vision and everything else is black, like a piece of black cardboard is there, right? So my mom blinked and, you know, closed her eyes and opened them again, didn't get better. So she called her eye doctor. So my mom has always had issues with her eyes since she was a little girl. It's all kinds of strange stuff. And so she has a, an eye doctor the way you might have a regular doctor. And the eye doctor, she describes it. And the eye doctor is like, I want you to come in right away. I don't want you to drive yourself. And my mom's like, wait, what's happening? No, no, it's nothing to worry about. Just if you can just come in right now and, and, and have someone else drive you. So off she goes. It turns out that while she slept, her retina detached, which was a thing I did not know could happen while you were sleeping. I didn't either. Wow. Yeah. So what happened next was they had to put her under while they injected fluid into her eyeball to keep mm. it from collapsing. That's the most horrible part of this story, by the way. So now you were through it. We're through the worst. Yeah. Yeah. Then, yeah. then they had to wake her up. Because in order to repair the retina, she it's one of those, eye, like a lot of times with eye surgery, they need you to be awake. And because you have to look to the right, look to the left, look up, look down. So they get her retina reattached. Don't ask me how, I have no idea. And her eyeball is still filled with this fluid and they slap a patch on her like a pirate and they send her home. She can't drive. She can't bend. She can't lift anything over five pounds. Like it's a really serious thing when your retina detaches from yeah, your eyeball. Of, of course. So, so she ends up going to stay at her friend's house because she's just, I mean, she just literally is helpless, right? So all this is going on and and she's okay now. Um, she was free. She was cleared to drive yesterday for the first time. And, um, and she told me when I talked to her yesterday that I was like, where are you going now that you're free? She goes, I'm going to the crematorium to pay in advance for my funeral so you won't have to. I'm like, oh, could we could we have one day where we don't act like like bit players in an Italian opera? One day? <laughs> one day. So everything I'm so relieved. Everything's fine. I'm going to see her in a month. So I'll I'll be out there pretty soon. And um and I hope she's great. still alive. Well, here's what happens. I walk outside. And there's this beautiful, enormous, fancy flower arrangement on my front steps. I mean, the thing was about two and a half feet tall. It was outrageous. And it was not one of these, you know, click here on the website. This thing was custom and spectacular. And I'm like, what is this? So I read the card and the card says, we're so sorry for the loss of your mother. Please know we're oh, you're no. surrounded by... Please know you're surrounded by prayer. And it was signed by all these people whose names I didn't recognize. And I'm like, wait a minute. Did my mom die and no one told me? And now I'm just getting flowers? I just talked to her. So I called the floor. I called my mom. No answer, which was a very, I want you to imagine that. Ring. I call her cell phone. Ring. No answer. I cannot get a hold of my mother. And I'm looking at these we're so sorry for the loss of your mother. So I called the florist office, the, the company that delivered them. And I said, I'm confused. I got these flowers here. And they were like, yeah, we're really sorry about your mom. I'm like, my mom is alive, but I'm not sure because I can't get her to answer her phone, right? So I'm like, my mom is alive. I'm pretty sure my mom is alive. These flowers are for, I don't know any of the people who signed this card. These flowers are for somebody else. And so the flower people were like, well, it's your address. They like it's not this is the wrong this is a mistake and somebody whose mom really did die is supposed to get these flowers and they were like well we'll have to call you back and i still can't they hang up on me i still can't reach my mom i i care me it comes into the room and i was like uh th she goes what are those i'm like those are because there's condolence flowers for the death of my mom and care me like grandma fran i'm like no she's fine i think i just can't get her on the phone so after like 30 or 40 minutes phone rings again and it's the florist shop, and they're still pretty well convinced I'm supposed to have what looks like about $300 worth of really fancy flowers. But the, I'm like, you have to send somebody to get them. These are somebody's mom's flowers. I can't. They finally come and get the flowers. And about an hour after that, I get my mom on the phone. And I'm like, oh, thank God. I got flowers in condolence for your passing. And my mom's like, oh, God, Cher, you would find out I was dead before the florist did. Thank you, Mom. That was exactly the sort of, like, 
warm and nurturing response I was looking for. Leave us a talk back. Talk back with the free Bob and Sherry app. We were talking about um, soda and how, you know, Dr. Coke is number one and the next distant competitor is Dr. Pepper. And we got on the subject of poppy. So poppy is soda, but it's much lower sugar and it claims to have some prebiotics in it. But Bob was saying that's actually BS. Like there's not enough in there to make it a to healthy do anything. drink. And yeah. yeah. And Lamar was saying that um, that he really likes Diet Coke. And, and he said, you know, you have to get used to it. But once you do, and that that's where my brain kind of locked up because it seems to me that the only things in life that you have to get used to are unpleasant things like an icy cold swimming pool or according to my grandma on black hair, your wedding night, you know, nasty things that are not really fun or pleasant or delicious, but you got to get used to them and then you'll be, you won't love them, but you'll be used to it and it'll be all right. You'll be able to do it. I have found that no one has ever said, oh, naps, once you get used to it or chocolate cake, you got to get used to it, right? Being independently wealthy and doing whatever you please. It's tough to get used to, but once you do. So anytime someone says to me, yeah, you just got to get used to it. I believe in my whole heart that it's something nasty. Prove me wrong. Okay. But there are are right here. Go ahead. The first beer you had was awful. The first good dry wine you had was like, oh, my God. I mean, it, there are some things that He's you don't right. like to start with. Right, right. It's a chore right. because you I never, want to be part of the people, you know? I never got used to beer. Like, how how many times have you seen me drink a beer in all the time? No, you know no, you're true, you're true. But you yeah. didn't like wine the first time. Um, th- um, I didn't like scotch. Wine, I grew up um, with even kids. We were given wine diluted with like a splash of Sprite or whatever um, on Sunday family dinner. So wine wasn't a thing for me. Scotch. Um, scotch was something to it, I didn't you? used to it. Yeah. Oh, well, I yeah. got to it because yeah. my husband drinks it. And, and if you have a man that's drinking scotch or a woman, it's Pride Month. You do you. The taste of a scotch flavored kiss is a really good thing. That is a fine yeah, true. fine experience. That's true. That's true. My father my father had a bar along with the restaurant. It was uh, you know, in the same building, but it was the bar. It had some booths, it was more casual. And I would go uh, and open up the restaurant like at ten o'clock in the morning, cleaning up or, you know, trying to help in some way. And I remember I was uh, how old was I? Twelve or thirteen, something like that. And I open up the restaurant and I'm walking around and I, was, I looked over at the bar and I never really gave much thought to it. I was allowed to go behind the bar and pull a Coke anytime I wanted, which was a terrible idea on my parents' part. But nonetheless, I went behind the bar and I looked at all those bottles and I went, boy, these adults, they really like this. And I got a shot glass right off of the bar and I poured some whiskey into it. And I, I sipped it and I said to myself, this is the most disgusting, horrible thing I have ever taken. How do these people drink? Why do they drink it? It's just disgusting. But you had to get used to it. Think of all the things you've had to get used to. I remember when Bob and I first started working together, I'm like, what kind of maniac can get up at four o'clock in the morning and function? And Bob goes, ah, oh, you get get used to it. And then he thought for a second and he goes, actually, you don't get used to it. You don't just, get just used do to it. it. You don't get used no, to it. Which I appreciate the my honesty. Whole adult life. Oh, God. I, I know people life. that used to do morning drive and then they left it and they did afternoons or they got out of the radio business. And they said, uh, five years later, I'm still tired from having done that all those years. 